Delegates from the South Asia Pacific region explore the legacy of Ellen G. White to reinforce the Adventist mission in Australia. Countdown to transform the Children's Sabbath School with the new Alive in Jesus curriculum in 2025. Good One Social Project uses profits from cashews to combat poverty in Ghana. North American Division prepares spiritual revolution for Pentecost 2025. Stay tuned for these stories and more right here on ANN. In Australia, a group of delegates from the Southern Asia Pacific Division of the Seventh day Adventist Church undertook a meaningful journey. They retraced the footsteps of Adventist pioneer Ellen G. White, revisiting her missionary legacy. Their goal was to connect with the past and renew their focus on mission work. The delegation, consisting of 47 members, embarked on a study tour designed to highlight the key contributions of Ellen White during her time in Australia. The tour included visits to significant locations tied to her missionary work, such as the Sydney Adventist Hospital and her former home, Sunnyside. Through these visits, participants reflected on how Ellen White's vision and commitment laid the foundation for institutions that continue to serve communities today. They also learned about her work, which often took place despite personal challenges, including illness and financial hardships. Ellen White's leadership and resilience were evident as she continued to write influential works. The trip has served as more than just a historical reflection. It was a reminder that the work Ellen G. White began is still alive, inspiring a new generation of leaders. And now, a spoiler about the Children's Sabbath School. In January 2025, the new curriculum, Alive in Jesus, will be launched filled with engaging Bible stories, interactive activities, and resources for parents and teachers. Get ready for an exciting journey of learning and faith suitable for children of all ages. The North American Division has some exciting news. We've adopted a new children's Sabbath school curriculum, Alive in Jesus, created by the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Sabbath School Department. This curriculum is unique in its approach, focusing on equipping and empowering parents, caregivers, Sabbath school teachers, and leaders to guide children towards a vibrant relationship with Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. A key aspect is the role modeling by Alive in Jesus teachers, leaders, and parents who exhibit a passion and a love for Jesus that is so joyful that it spreads from child to child and beyond. Can you imagine a more robust form of evangelism than kid to kid evangelism? Just as the Bible becomes central to our lives when we abide in Jesus, so God's Word also forms the heart of the Alive in Jesus curriculum, the heart and the foundation. Alive in Jesus shows children that the truths of the Bible are unchanging and trustworthy, providing a solid foundation for their faith to blossom and grow. Mark your calendars for January 2025. That's when the new Baby Steps curriculum designed for ages birth through 12 months will launch in North American Seventh-day Adventist churches. And at the same time, a new beginner curriculum for ages one to three will be launched. Both age levels are centered around modeling family worship and the joy of knowing, loving, and serving Jesus and inspiring children to hashtag say yes to Jesus. I invite you to join us here as we unpack the various components and resources of the Alive in Jesus Children's Sabbath School curriculum. Let's explore together and see how Alive in Jesus will transform the hearts of leaders, teachers, children, and families. May God guide us to nurture the faith of our children and help them know the love of Jesus in a profound way. Today we'll witness the second part of this powerful testimony from Papua New Guinea. With unprecedented results in the region, lives are being transformed. At one of the sites, an appeal was made for baptism, but no one initially responded. 
As the moment grew tense, a dog suddenly walked down the center aisle, sat in front of the crowd, and looked back at the people. Inspired by the dog's unexpected action, a large number of people soon came forward to be baptized. Isn't God amazing? On the first Sabbath, a staggering 98,000 people were baptized across PNG. This momentum continued every weekend, with beaches flooded with masses of newly converted, consecrated souls, making public declarations of faith. An astonishing 330,000 individuals surrendered their lives to Jesus. AWR leadership was flown in a helicopter provided and paid for by the PNG government. I want to share with you one particular story that stands out. We went to see what happened at one church. This is a Church of Christ that has been around for 22 years. These people had heard about PNG for Christ. They begin studying the Bible Sabbath message. The entire congregation decided to become Avenus. They dedicated their building by changing their Sunday church sign to a Seventh-day Adventist church sign. The entire congregation was ready for baptism, but Stephen, the church pastor, was a little hesitant. AWR's pastor Robert July felt convicted to stay behind and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Pastor Stephen. Meanwhile, his entire congregation was being immersed into the water. Robert implored him, what is holding you back from being baptized? As the last member of the congregation was coming up out of the water, everyone heard, wait, wait, one more, as Pastor Stephen made his way down to the water. It was the very evening of his baptism that he made a declaration video pleading, I am appealing to all my fellow Sunday pastors like me. Please, we need to tell the truth to all our Sunday churches and our fellow Christians. Their lives are very important, so they all can be saved into the kingdom of God. Pastor Stephen's Church of Christ was one of 16 Sunday churches that became SDA congregations just in that area, let alone across the entire country. But wait, that's not all. Take a look at this next public declaration made by an Anglican couple. We come from an Anglican background. My husband is the chairman of the Anglican Church, and I am the chairlady of the Anglican Church. When we attended this crusade, God has really touched our life. From Anglican, we are shifted to be the Sabbath keepers now. Tomorrow is a new day and a new era in the life of my husband and I that will be baptized. The first phase of PNG for Christ has officially concluded. Now, the retention and discipleship endeavors have been implemented. The goal is to ensure that each soul stands on solid ground in their new Avenus beliefs to last their lifetime. Retention classes started the very next day, and churches were full of new converts ready for action. No one has been forgotten. Children are now engaged in Pathfinders. Women have formed Bible study groups and Dorcas Community Services, learning new skills. Each baptized person is being shepherded, fully integrated, and activated into a local Seventh-day Adventist church. The new members are on fire for God, equipped to share the powerful three angels' messages that they have embraced. The streams of light are beaming brightly throughout Papua New Guinea. Thanks to donors' faithful support, AWR continues to push the boundaries of technology and implement new strategies to reach the entire world in this generation. AWR is fulfilling the gospel commission to go and preach in all the world so the end can come quickly. It's so uplifting to see stories like this, results that we sometimes only dream about now become a growing reality. Lives are changing and hope is spreading. Let's go straight to Vanuatu, an archipelago in the South Pacific, where the country's only Adventist school has just celebrated a historic milestone. 
Epauto Adventist Senior Secondary School, located in Port Vila, the capital of Vanuatu, marked its 20th anniversary with a series of activities, including exhibitions, parades, and student competitions. Founded in 2004 with just 73 students, the school now serves 768 students, highlighting its growing impact in the region. During the event, a commemorative plaque was unveiled, and Pastor Charlie Jimmy led a special service, emphasizing education as a ministry. Ipado Adventist School also announced plans for new facilities and an administrative building, funded by an ongoing fundraising campaign to meet the increasing demand with a focus on education and community service. Congratulations to Ipauto Adventist School for two decades of impact in education and community service. In the segment, a special message from Pastor Ted Wilson, the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, explores part one of chapter 35 from The Great Controversy by Ellen White. Wilson discusses the powerful influence of church and state during the Dark Ages and its enduring impact on religious practices. Greetings, friends. Today, I would like to take a moment in gratefulness to the Lord for the religious freedom that many of us experience today. While there are some countries where people are not free to follow their own consciences, many other countries, including the United States, still offer religious freedom for all. However, as history reveals, religious freedom is a relatively new concept. For centuries, church and state were united with the state, often being dominated by the church. As we have been reading through that marvelous book, The Great Controversy, we have seen how persecution comes when the state becomes an instrument to enforce the church's teachings and dogmas. This was most clearly portrayed during what has aptly been called the Dark Ages when for more than 1,000 years, the Roman Catholic Church had great power to enforce its dogmas. To gain more adherence during its early years, the Roman Church adapted several pagan practices, including the worship of images and sun worship. As the Church continued growing, it worked to establish the Venerable Day of the Sun, Sunday, as the Lord's Day, attempting to replace the seventh-day Sabbath of the Bible. We read in the Great Controversy that royal edicts, general councils, and church ordinances sustained by secular power were the steps by which the pagan festival attained its position of honor in the Christian world. The Roman Emperor Constantine, a nominal convert to Christianity, introduced the first public measure enforcing Sunday observance in 321 AD. For the full episode and other videos delving deeper into the Seventh-day Adventist faith and its story, visit our official channel on YouTube. After the break, you'll see more stories of Adventists impacting the world. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Imagine a business where every dollar makes a difference. That's exactly what Good One is achieving, turning cashews into a force for change. By partnering with Adra, they've created a model where profits fuel community projects, saving lives and bringing hope. In this hand, you have a faith-based development and relief agency that fights poverty in more than 100 countries around the world. And in this hand, you have some of the best ingredients that Mother Nature can provide. All natural, organic, and sustainably farmed. Which hand do you choose? With Good One, 
You don't have to choose. When you combine the proven global work of the Adventist Development and Relief Agency with sustainable, community-driven farming, this is what you get. Products that taste good and products that do good. Good One is already partnering with farmers and distributors in Ghana to harvest, package, and sell cashews that is ethically sourced and completely organic. By employing members of the local community to farm and produce some of the highest quality cashews, we are providing jobs and offering natural and delicious products. Products that are already in high demand in several countries around the world. And best of all, that high demand for cashews generates profit. Profit with a purpose, that is. Good One partners with ADRA to ensure that 100% of all the proceeds is invested back into community projects that save lives. And it's not just cashews. The business model of Good One is replicable all over the world, like in the Solomon Islands, where cacao is a thriving agricultural product. The possibilities are endless. Good One is all about possibility. Imagine what the world could be if businesses were more community driven and if humanitarian agencies were more self-sustaining. That is the possibility of Good One. Hope. It's inspiring to see what happens when business meets purpose. Good One demonstrates that the possibilities are endless when profits are used for the greater good. This is more than just a business. It's a movement for a better future. Pentecost 2025 is a movement encouraging Seventh-day Adventists in North America to host over 3,000 proclamation events through the year 2025. Members and leaders are being equipped with tools and resources for effective evangelism. G. Alexander Bryant, president of the North American Field, shares details of the initiative and calls on the faithful to join this great movement. This is a church where I started my pastoral ministry about 40 years ago. Over a year ago, in attending this church, there were only five members attending on a regular basis. We conducted an evangelistic meeting last year in August, and 19 precious souls were baptized. Now they average about 25 in attendance, and some Sabbaths over 35. They are planning to be a part of Pentecost 2025. Pentecost 2025 is not an event. It is a comprehensive initiative encompassing all the ministries of Jesus, the compassion ministry of Jesus, the teaching ministry of Jesus, and the discipling ministry of Jesus. At its core, Pentecost 2025 is an acknowledgement of our need for the latter reign of the Holy Spirit. It is a commitment to pray earnestly for the outpouring of this latter rain. It is a commitment to engage in the compassionate ministry of Jesus through community activities. It is a commitment to harvest the interests of those who are open to knowing Jesus. It is a commitment to proclaim the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. It is a commitment to engage in discipling new members. And finally, it is a commitment to start the cycle all over again. We're challenging all of our pastors and laypersons across the North American Division territory to collectively conduct 3,000 plus meetings. If you've never conducted a proclamation meeting before, then this is the time for you. We are looking for first timers and veteran gospel proclaimers to be involved. Pentecost started in a small place, not unlike this, and God blessed mightily. He performed unusual miracles through the power of the Holy Spirit. And today, we're asking for those same miracles through His power. Let's join together and pray earnestly for the outpouring of the latter rain and commit to proclaiming the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ unlike we ever have before because we're asking for the Holy Spirit 
unlike we ever have before. Let's have Pentecost again in 2025. Come join us. Come join us. Come join us. Let us pray for this and other projects carried out worldwide each year, all with the same purpose, to receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in order to preach the gospel of salvation with power, hastening the soon return of Christ. In St. Petersburg, Russia, ADRA is bringing hope to many families through a project of love and care with the support of volunteers. Let's find out how this initiative is making a difference in the lives of parents and children. ADRA is supporting the Kind Hands Project. This initiative provides assistance to families with children, offering temporary relief to parents, while volunteers lead fun and engaging activities directly with children. While volunteers care for the little ones, parents have the chance to rest, receive valuable information about health and education, and even enjoy a massage session. This project has been a true support for many families in St. Petersburg, promoting health and well-being. May initiatives like this continue to spread the love of Christ around the world. In Cebu City, Philippines, the Chinese Filipino Adventist Church launched the Discover Ancient Wisdom campaign, resulting in the baptism of 16 new members who accepted Jesus as their savior. The evangelistic campaign attracted over 200 participants, including 70 to 90 non-Adventist guests, with a focus on the Chinese community. Organized by the Chinese Filipino Seventh-day Adventist Church, the event aimed to engage the Chinese population, estimated at 1.35 to 1.5 million, while also appealing to people from diverse backgrounds. The week-long series addressed topics like health, legal issues, and spiritual growth. Dr. Samuel Wong led discussions linking ancient Chinese traditions to Jesus, referred to as the Chinese Tao. The campaign resulted in 16 individuals committing to Jesus through baptism, highlighting the church's mission to spread hope and the gospel to various groups, especially in the 1040 window. Through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, evangelism transcends barriers, reaching people from diverse cultural and religious backgrounds and inspiring life-changing decisions. Discover the inspiring journey of the missionary couple Lewis and Ella Finster, pioneers of hope who introduced the gospel of Jesus to the Philippines and established the country's first Adventist church. Their efforts helped build a community of over one million Adventists and thousands of churches and institutions across the nation. Philippines. Lewis and Ella Finster arrived as pioneer missionaries in the Philippines on December 17, 1908. Three years later, they started a group of believers that would become the first Filipino Adventist church in the country. Originally from the United States, Lewis attended Union College. After graduation, he worked in the U.S., but it wasn't long before Lewis and his wife Ella felt called to serve overseas. They served in Western Australia and for a short time in Tasmania before they were called to the Philippines. When Lewis and Ella arrived in Manila, there were no Filipino Adventists. The few missionaries before them had worked in Spanish and English, primarily with the foreign community. Although J.L. McKelleny had started preparing literature for Filipinos, Lewis realized that only 5% of the population spoke Spanish, so he began learning Tagalog with a translator for the American Bible Society. The translator learned about the Sabbath from one of the tracts and was among the first group of baptisms in 1911. Lewis planted the first church in Santa Ana, a suburb of Manila. Lewis encouraged his young converts to join in the mission and he soon had a group of culpators and village evangelists. The work grew rapidly. And while in the Philippines, the Finsters saw four conferences and one union conference established. Today, there are more than 1.2 million Seventh-day Adventists in the Philippines and more than 7,000 churches and companies. 
there is one Seventh-day Adventist for every 86 people. To these pioneering missionaries, we say, Salamat. For more mission stories, visit AdventistMission.org. I hope you enjoyed this multicultural experience of news from the Seventh-day Adventist Church worldwide. Present in over 200 countries, the denomination seeks to be the hands and feet of Christ through its members, leaders, administrative headquarters, institutions, and support ministries. You can access other good news by joining the official channels of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and also on the ANN website, Adventist.News. Share your freight journey and submit prayer requests on our channels. Our team is committed to praying for you 24-7. Before I say goodbye, I leave you with the inspiring words from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verse 6. The text says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Study the Bible daily to discover other wonderful promises of hope. God willing, we will meet in the next edition of ANN. God bless you.